After consulting widely with many members of our community, I made the difficult decision to begin discussions with Richard Spencer's group to determine whether he will be allowed to rent space on the University of Michigan campus. If we cannot assure a, no. a reasonably safe setting for the event, we will not allow it to go forward. When I accepted the presidency of this great university three and a half years ago, I did so in part based on my appreciation and respect for our shared values, that we can't be excellent without being diverse, that all individuals, regardless of their background, deserve full inclusion in our community and an equal opportunity to thrive. We now face a very difficult test of our ability to uphold these values. This is a test we did not welcome, but it's one we must face together. My foremost priority is ensuring the safety of everyone at this university. However, as a public university, the law and our commitment to free speech forbid us from declining a speaker based on the presumed content of speech. But we can and we will impose limits on time, place, and manner of speaking engagement to protect the safety of our University of Michigan community. Let me repeat. If we cannot assure a reasonably safe setting for the event, we will not allow it to go forward. There's no safe setting. If we do decide a safe event is possible, we would share safe. that it's information with the U of M community in advance. Let me be clear. The U of M has not invited this individual to our campus, nor is anyone in our community sponsoring him. His representatives made a request to rent space on our campus for him to speak. We're legally prohibited from blocking such requests based solely on the content of that speech, however sickening it is. Since the request came in, I've grappled with how to distance my personal feelings from the important safety considerations I must weigh as president. I recognize that an appearance by Spencer will cause genuine emotional hurt to many members of our community. People die! I personally detest and reject the hateful white supremacy and white nationalism expressed by Mr. Spencer, as well as his racist, anti-Semitic, and otherwise bigoted views as to the regents and the entire leadership of the university. Many followers who show up at his rallies share his repugnant beliefs and should be shunned by our community. His views and those of his organization and his followers are antithetical to everything we stand for at the University of Michigan. We strive for intellectual rigor and equal opportunity for all who seek to learn, teach, and conduct research for the public good. We've heard from many of you about your concerns since the request was submitted. We discussed these concerns with many members of our community as we weighed our options. First, as I mentioned, Making the appearance as safe as possible for the members of our community and all involved was our foremost concern. We will continue to rely on a thorough assessment of safety considerations by our Division of Public Safety and Security. In general, limits on time, place, and manner of speech have been upheld in lawsuits alleging violations of the First Amendment. Content-based prior restraint or denying the opportunity to speak in advance has not. We will insist on appropriate and lawful requirements on time, place, and manner of speech in ways that our experts conclude are most conducive to public safety for the entire community, including those who are not part of our learning community. Second, denying the request would provide even more attention to the speaker and his cause and allow him to claim a court victory. Those who would use public spaces as venues to promote hate are emboldened by denials they can fight in court. That's what you're doing. Their formula is clear. Request to use public space, sue if not allowed to speak, claim oppression by the state to stoke outrage, and use each moment as a rallying cry for their views. Third, as painful as it is to allow this speaker to rent our space, a democratic society without free speech is unimaginable. Historically, it is the speech rights of people from marginalized groups that are most often threatened and always essential. If we refuse to rent space to this odious individual, 
it is easier to imagine our government at some point in the future deciding that some of your ideas are too dangerous or too opposed to our values to allow others to hear. We can't let that happen, even though it means we must allow vile speech. Here's what we can do as a community. We can ignore him, reject the hate and evil he espouses, and offer support to those he targets with his racist and discriminatory views. We can also deprive him of the attention he needs to survive and deny him the crowds he craves. Imagine the power of a room mostly empty with only his audience being a few followers surrounded by hundreds of empty seats. We can also support each other, speak out and protest in different venues. We know that many students, faculty, and staff might want to hold events of their own that reflect U of M values away from the venue Mr. Spencer would rent. If a time and place are identified, we will work with our community to host those type of events. I would also encourage everyone to stay away from areas where the presence of his supporters might contribute to an unstable situation, which would help to keep our community safe, while at the same time standing up for our values. We've created a website with information about this request. It will be updated as details are developed. All of us can unite against the evils of racism, anti-Semitism, discrimination, and those who seek to degrade and diminish others. The University of Michigan is home to our nation's strongest and best academic community. The students, staff, and graduates who care deeply about their fellow Wolverines and who strive to lead in a better world. No one who rents space on our campus can take that away from us. Uh, I call for uh, any.